Ten. Stomach nine, uh, take eight, studio. Seven. Six. Stomach five, cover one, mice four, one and two. Three, two, one. Take studio. Good afternoon, MCHS. Today is December the 1st, 2011. I'm Dakota Fleming. And I'm Tim Evans. We have a packed show for you today, including a look at the inner workings of the Snack Shack and an exclusive one-on-one -on -one interview with the director of this year's drama production, Vanessa King. But first, our top story. On November 11th, more than billions gathered at the Legion to remember the sacrifices of our brave men and women in uniform. This Remembrance Day, citizens also took time to remember our hometown hero, Master Corporal Brian Greff. MCHS also took time to remember an assembly held the day before. We sent our very own Mark Bashan to learn more about what Remembrance Day means to this community. At MCHS, we have taken a little bit of our time to remember those soldiers who died for our country. We go to Paige Brenes of Morva Cadet Corps and discuss what Remembrance Day means to her. Remembrance Day means to me honoring the armed forces and the people who have died and who are serving currently in the armed forces because I know how their families react and how it is tough for them to deal with some of the losses and the loved ones going overseas. MCHS Student Council Brendan Fistrell has some words to share on what Remembrance Day means to him. Uh, for me, it's a time of, uh, of thinking about Canadians past and present who, who fought for what we have today. Um, I'm really thankful of, of the, the Canada we have and I'm really proud of, of uh, of what Canada does on a, on a global scale and so I think uh, for Remembrance Day to me it's, it's, uh, it's, about, uh, it's about Canada's reputation and I guess just uh, really appreciating those who, who built it. MCHS was not the only place to remember those who died in our country. The town of Mournville had its own celebration of Remembrance Day to those who had given their lives. We go to Marilyn Kutcher, a member of the Mournville Legion. To me it means I have a good life right now. Yeah. It's because of the soldiers that have passed for us, who have served their country for us. Um, many have lost their lives. Many have come home. Um, I know it's not over. You know, hopefully they'll all come home safe. We also discussed with Captain Ed Bishop on what Remembers Day means to him. As a uh Ex-member of the military, it's a it's a big day. Uh, it's our chance to say thank you to all those who uh, lost their lost their lives supporting Canada, and for all the the wars that we have fought. And now that I'm with the Cadet Corps, it's uh, it's probably the most important day for them, so they can uh, get into the uh, habit of remembering. Also, Mournville Legion every year leads the Mournville Remembrance Day celebration. We go to Justin Kuch's Sergeant Arms of the Legion and discuss on what Remembrance Day means to him. Remembrance Day means everything to me. Uh, it's the biggest time of the year for me. I spend lots of hours, volunteer hours, to prepare for it. Being Sergeant Arms for the Mournville Legion for the last two years, this will be my final parade as Sergeant at Arms. Uh, this is the best time to celebrate and remember all of our soldiers that have fought in many, many wars, wherever they may be. And uh, it's just awesome to see everyone turn out and show up for it. Truly many people did show up on the cold day to show their appreciation. For MCTV, this is Mark Bashan, lest we forget. Ever wonder where all those flurries and slushes came from when it takes most of lunch to walk to Max and back? Well, we have our own little version of heaven here at MCHS. It's called the Snack Shack. We all know it's infamous for its good food and hot dogs, but have you ever wondered what goes on behind the scenes? And a special investigation reporter, reporter Caitlin Eubles, explores the inner workings of this popular concession. All about the Snack Shack from the Snack Shack manager, Janet Gates. Also what it has to offer for students. The Snack Shack helps students by giving them opportunity for work experience. They learn skills here that they maybe don't learn at home or out in the community. It's a place where students can come and learn work experience things. We have lots of different varieties of food here, junk food, some healthy food, apples, oranges, things like that, yogurt, fruit cups. And students come here, they learn how to operate the machines, they learn the cash register, clean up, they set everything up for lunches. 
yes, there's always expectations for the students that they do their best and that they're trustworthy and honest and that they complete all the jobs that are on the checklist there that are jobs that have to be done whether it's setting up the store or cleaning up the store. Yeah. Now we get an outlook on the opinions of some students. I guess it's good for like work experience. I really like the ice cream machine, it's fun to play with. Working there and it's kind of, it's fun because you get to, you, you learn kind of teamwork skills and stuff like that and gets you some experience for the real world. And for MCTV News, this is Caitlin Newell signing off. Well, Tim, it's been a wild week on the weather front. Sure has. Feels more like spring than winter. You're just eager for the trip to Europe, aren't you? Busted. But really, we're averaging 8 degrees above normal for this time of year. That's pretty good. Yep. See if it'll hold. Let's check with our weather specialist, Austin Kennedy. Thank you, guys. Well, uh, yeah, we are lucky right now. But for the rest of Canada, it's not. Let's take a look. In uh, Whitehorse, it's uh, minus 3. Yellowknife, it's uh, minus 6. For Vancouver, it's 4 degrees. Uh, for Iqaluit, it's minus 9. Regina, it's minus 2 with sun. Winnipeg, minus 7. Uh, in Toronto, it is 6 degrees right then. Uh, Montreal, 2 degrees. Halifax, 9 degrees with, with clouds. Uh, 14 degrees for uh, St. John's with uh, some rain. Let's look at our, Alber uh, our Alberta forecast right now. Uh, minus 1 in high level with chance of snow. Uh, hot Grand Prairie with... Uh, Chant with rain right there with five degrees. Jasper minus three with the uh, sun and snow. Uh, Banff minus one with sun and clouds. Red Deer, uh, um, sun and cloud. And basically the rest of Alberta is looking like that. Except for Calgary and Medicine Hat for uh, sun and cloud there with four degrees and zero degrees for Medicine Hat. Let's look at our uh, current conditions in Mournville. Uh, right now it's zero degrees in Mournville right now. Winds are southwest at 15 kilometers an hour. The humidity is 86% right now. Sunrise this morning was 8.27 a.m. And sunset will be uh, 4.18 4 later today. Let's look at our seven week forecast for Thursday is uh, a mix of snow and, uh, snow and rain at five degrees. Our low will be minus two. Friday will be uh, minus two with snow. Uh, Saturday will be uh, snow, uh, will be three degrees and our whole week is looking like that and that's our weather back to you guys thanks ozzy many of you have seen the posters all over the school for mchs's drama production the pirates of penzance running december 6 to 9th this epic production directed by vanessa king promises to keep you on the edge of your seat with suspense and rolling on the ground laughing to see what happens behind those huge steel doors of the drama stage and how things are coming we sent jacob roy to take a look in the month of december before students and staff go on their Christmas break. Vanessa King organizes play for MCHS and the rest of Morinville to come and watch and enjoy themselves as students act and sing for them. So Mrs. King, as well as the actors in the play, tell me how well the preparations are coming for this upcoming event. Yeah, yeah, they're actually going really good. We had a really strong start. We nailed Act 1 within a couple of weeks. Act 2 is a little bit more difficult, so it's taking a little bit longer. Uh, but we're doing well. I'm proud of it. Um, you know, I think it's going pretty good. Like, obviously, we still have a lot of work to do. But I'm really excited, and it's going to be such a good show. Oh, yeah, because we, we're making a lot of progress from just, you know, reading the script. So getting a lot of stuff done. This year's play is The Pirates of Hands Hands. And this year's show has been both a struggle for both for actors and directors since actors have to be singing more than talking. So I wondered if this play has been harder than the plays before this one. The last five years I'd say this one is the most challenging. Technically it's an operetta so there's way more singing than talking which is more difficult to choreograph and to block and to direct. Um, I mean, we've got songs that are like eight to ten minutes long. It's intense. It's crazy. So yeah, very challenging, but very fun. Yep, they're going excellent. We are just about to practice now, and everyone's practicing before practice even starts, so we're pretty prepared. <laughs> oh, of course. It's such a difficult thing to like get together and control a group of crazy teenagers or whatever, so they're doing a great job. Miss Ray always pulls it off. Miss Turnbull's very helpful, and Keegan's just, he's great. For MCTV News, I'm Jacob Roy.
reporting. Thanks, Jacob, and who better to talk to about the upcoming Pirates of Penzance play, the director herself, Mrs. Vanessa King. Mrs. King, thanks for joining us in the studio today. No problem. First of all, um, when is the play happening, and how can get, how folks get tickets for it, and uh, how much are they? Uh, the show runs Tuesday through Friday next week, so December 6, 7, 8, 9, and tickets are available in the office, at the door, and at Sobeys. Okay, so without giving too much away, what can, for, what can folks look forward to uh, that's different from previous plays? Uh, well, this play, it's a little bit different because it's actually an operetta, not a musical, which means that so much more of the storyline is told through song, uh, which means that there's a lot of singing, a lot of dancing, a lot of choreography, and it's just very upbeat and exciting. So uh, with the amount of music in this year's play, has it been challenging to find musical talent amongst the current student body? We have a really strong cast this year, and this was definitely the year to hit Pirates of Penzance. Um, so I got no worries. We've got such a strong cast, we're good. Uh, who surprised you the most with their singing ability? Um, I don't think surprised me, but uh, Brennan Fitzgerald is our lead this year, and he's never been a lead in one of our big productions. And he's carrying the show. He's doing a phenomenal job. He's got great support behind him, but I'm really impressed with his work this year. Um, what advice can you give folks coming to the play? When should they arrive to get good seats? And for that matter, where are the good seats? Well, it is general seating, so when you come in, it's kind of first come, first serve. So if you get there earlier, you'll wait at the door for a bit. Uh, doors will open between 6.30, 6.45, and you can grab a seat then. But this year, we're actually raffling off two uh, couches where you can sit in oh, a couch. Yeah. So it'd cool. be a little bit better. Well, I'm definitely looking forward to it. Um, thank you so very much for joining us. No we, re we really appreciate it. Uh, if you can't make it to this year's play, fear not. Uh, the MCTV crew will be filming the play and producing DVDs that will be available for sale for 25 bucks. You can order yours from Mrs. Jackson in the office. <laughs> Turning to sports now, the Western Canadian Challenge wrapped up another stellar year at the volleyball tournament here. Players from all over the prairies made the journey to the capital region to compete against the Wolves and the best of the best from around Western Canada. Here's our Amanda Un Andrick with a look. WCC is one of the largest volleyball tournaments in Western Canada. I spoke to organizer Kent Lassard and asked him about the ongoing success of the tournament over the past 17 years. Well, we're very happy with the success of WCC over the years. Uh, we've had lots of teams come to the tournament and they've expressed a lot of uh, appreciation for the outstanding organization and the appreciation from the Lions about their contributions and things like that. A total of 48 teams attended the 2011 tournament. The Wolves played their best, and despite the fact that they went 0-5, they still managed to stay proud and optimistic. It's awesome. It brings like honor and pride to our community. Not only is WCC a competition for the best, it's also a time to have fun and be with your friends. I like WCC because it's fun, and people get to watch you, and lots of cute boys show up. The tournament was a huge success this year, and congratulations to the women of Rajasthan High School and the men of Peace Wapiti Academy for walking me with gold. I'm Amanda Andrick reporting for MCTV News. Well, that's our show for today. Thanks for tuning in. Join us again in two weeks from today when our stories will be... A look at the new parent-teacher interview format that now sees the entire staff in the gymnasium. We'll get feedback from staff, students, and parents. We'll also look, at, look back on the MCHS Wagathon that was held to raise money for the mission trip to New Orleans this spring. And we'll have a behind the scenes peek at the band program here at MCHS. For all of us here at MCTV, I'm Tim Evans. I'm Dakota Fleming. And I'm Austin Kennedy.